Your motivational video. Start with your daily sales goal tracker. Um, can I see your thing real quick that you gave me? So I wanted to make you guys jealous. So uh, I can make these. I got plenty of these folders. I got plenty of this paper. I got plenty of ink. And uh, Thomas asked me for one because he saw my old one. He was like, can I get one of those paper ones so that I can like actually do it? Here's your monthly calendar. You can plan your, your life on it. You can plan your goals on it. You can write your goal for the month. And then, oh, look at that. He's filling out his goals. His goals knock 150 doors a day, 15 pitches, send out 20 quotes. I guess so. Make five <laughs> sales, service one. So it has all the things on it to be successful. And he's gonna fill it out on a daily basis to help structure himself, to keep himself successful. And so um, I wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, yeah, so Will asked a good question. Will was like, what's a good, what's a good season or a good month for people? And you know, there's, you know, there's an industry kind of selling a hundred in a season. If you go out for a season, you sell a hundred, like, you know, that's like, okay, like you went out there. Selling 200 is a little bit more admirable, you know, and it just kind of comes down to money, you know, because 100 is like $10,000. So you're making like 2,500 a, a month, right? That's okay, cool. You got a job, you know, and then 200, that's more impressive. That's like about 5,000 a month. So that's like, okay, that's cool. Um, 300, that's like, wow, okay, dude, you're making some serious money. You know, you're getting like, I don't know how much that is, a lot of money, uh, like, $30,000 in a season, you know, so like $7,000 a month. Like that's like, that's impressive. Like that, that's good money. You know, how much is 300 in a, in four months, about 75 or something like that a month something like that. Yeah. Nice. Um, so, but those are everyone's in, so I wanted to go over some goals and things like that. So those are like industry kind of numbers when someone's like, oh, I did 300 in the summer. Like that's cool. You know, there's people who have done 400 and 500 and stuff like that. There are people who have done a thousand. Uh, yesterday, Ryan Kovex texted me. He's like, in the last 365 days, I've sold a thousand accounts. So that's cool. That means he's doing about 330 in a season, you know, which is awesome. Um, he's definitely killing it. But the thing is, everybody's, I wanted to go over goals and I wanted to go over why. And so I wanted to go over, the way I set it up is needs. Like, what are your needs? So do you know how many sales you need to make this week? Your, your needs are, can you pay rent? Can you pay your bills? Those are your needs. How many sales do you need to make to, you know, how many sales do you need to make this week? Um, I need to make 20. How many sales do you need to make this week? At least 10. Cool. Noah, how many are you gonna make this week? I mean, you need to make like five. Perfect, I love it. So you all should know your need and how you do that is you, what's your, you guys should be like writing notes, taking active participation of this, writing out, writing into your schedule when you're gonna actively do these things. Um, and so what's your budget? What's, what's your cost of living? How much does it cost for you to live a month? And everyone's needs are different because Skylar, you got like six kids, right? Living with you in like that 8,000 square foot house. Your mortgage alone is $5,000, right? Like, so I was talking to somebody's father once talking about how expensive life is. And he was like, my mortgage alone, I think it was something like $5,000, you know? Like, I was like, man, life is expensive. And he was like, my mortgage alone is $5,000, let alone like my the total cost of living for everything. So, do you guys know that number? I mean, you don't need to share it, but I need $5,000 to live. I need $8,000 to live, right? So you need to figure out that first so you know how many sales you need per week. And then what are your wants? So, no, do you want a new wardrobe? You want some cool shoes? What do you, what do you want? If I give you $1,000 and I said you can't put it towards the bill, what do you want to buy? Uh, some new shoes or gym. Cool. Go buy it. Go do it. Like... Awesome. Austin, what do you want to, what do you want? I think I want to go to Europe, backpack around. Okay, cool. How much does that cost? I don't know. Cool. Which flight are you going to take? Where are you going to stay? You need to create your future with your mind first, you know? 
Jaden, what do you want? Uh, laptop. Nice. Okay. What kind of laptop do you want? Um, looking at the new 15-inch MacBook. Nice. That's sweet. How much does that cost? Like 1400 Sweet. Nice. You should do it. So, and, you know, you all probably have a car. Is that the car you really want to drive? You, like, feel awesome. I know, Skyler, you're driving freaking Lambo, so you're good. But you got, like, Charger. But you mentioned about, that's, like, they've been your whole life. You're like, I'm like, why do you want money? And you're always like, what? Cars. Cars. You want to buy a what? Like a Maserati or something? Um, 3RX7 is the brand new Pagani that came out. That's, like, 2.5 million. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the oh, new... That's 800 a week. Uh, you told me. Yeah, I, I will give you the phone number of people that do this job that are driving around cars like that and own them. Up in Utah, they got big regions. That's exactly why we're here. We're not here to play in the dirt and have fun. We're here. I was texting all the owners of all the companies, Vantage Marketing, Anthem, Moxie. I like, I'm talking to all these people and they're like, dude, it's time for you to come play with the big boys. Like, come on, let's get on that hundred list. You know, like that's where we're going. We're not here to like play around. Like this is coach Wooden when he, the best high school, bas best college basketball coach ever. You know, who coach Wooden is, have you talked about him? I don't know if we talked about him, um, but he was practicing in half court in some of the Grinky Dean college and the, the wrestling team was playing on the other half of the court, wrestling around, smelling like sweat, and their high school, college basketball team on a half court. But he got so recognized because they did so well that UCLA was like, we want you. And he ended up getting recruited there, and he was one of the best. Coach Wooden, if you don't know who he is, you should read his book. He'll change your life. Mike? So, and then what are your goals? You know, if, you, if I need to make 10 a week to cover my needs, I need to make what I want. I need to make 15 a week to get my wants, you know, so I, next month, I'm gonna buy that MacBook. You need to set goals for yourself. I want a MacBook. How many sales do I need to buy that MacBook? So I need 15, because next month, and put a time date on it. Next month, I'm buying that MacBook. I'm selling 15 this week rather than 10 this week, because I want that MacBook. And then what's your goal? Like goals, once you start making good money and you get everything you want, then your paradigm shifts. And you're like, what do I want? I'm like, what's my goal in life? Like. What's your guys' real goal? What's everyone's like deep inner aspiration? Legacy? To be remembered? To do something in the world? To like, right? Do you even want to exist here and then disappear? And who's that guy? Like, or do you guys want to create some real legacy? And do you guys want to have to sell 10 every day, every week? Or do you want some freedom? Freedom and variety are the ultimate luxuries in life. Do you want to eat cereal every day or do you want to go try some nice things? You know, me and my wife, like not saying anything, we went down to Dallas, nicest sushi restaurant there. Like there was the menu and I was just like, show me a good time. You know, they're like, if you want a good time, here's a 10 course meal, it's $400. It's like, sweet, let's do it. Like, and she loves that. She went out and she was like, let's go to a nice restaurant, you know? That's like, it was the best meal, honestly. Maybe it's because I spent so much, I like have to justify it in my head. But it was the best meal I've ever had. I love sushi, and like it was the best sushi. Like each one was handcrafted by like a master sushi chef. And it was amazing. And they're all seasoned. They're like, you have to put it in like this and that. And like, and she loved it. Like I made her happy, you that's know? Awesome. She was like, she enjoyed it. So that's it. So like maybe goals like that. My goal, my want is to take my wife out. My goal is to find a wife. You know, <laughs> um, so what's your why? If you don't have purpose, you're gonna burn out. If this is a, it's a hard job. It's like, it's been, the weather's been pretty nice lately. I mean, it's, it's been pretty mild. So um, you guys got that going for you. Um, so it's been a little bit easier than normal. Um, next month, it might start warming up a little bit. <laughs> but what's your why? Am I just talking into the air? Or like, are you guys thinking? Yeah. What, what What are some things that have happened inside your head, Will? Well, I uh, gotta get those investment properties up and running, so. Yeah, the ultimate goal, I think, for you guys should be freedom, which freedom. You, you make so much excess money that you don't need that money, so you can afford to put that money into an investment that gives you a residual income. 
that money needs to work for you. If you've read um, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad or is it Thinking Grow Rich, which one, Richest Man in Babylon, it is the Richest Man in Babylon that talks about this. Um, each dollar is a worker. So I've got like 20 employees at Dan Can, right? And they'll go work for me every day, making a return. Each dollar, you should look at it as a worker. It should, they, you should be able to go put that dollar to work and it should work for you, producing you an extra 10 cents a year on it, multiplying itself. And then that 10 cents should multiply it again. So if you've got $10 making a 10% return, every year your workforce grows to $11. Now you got $11 working for you. Compound interest. Yeah. We were talking about with Thomas, do you guys know how much money you need to retire? About a million dollars. No, nope. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, maybe the, you're not be a little closer. I mean, most, yeah. We're talking. Most people are looking at like thirty years to retire. Oh, yeah. The average person retires at what? 65. 65, 63. The way Social Security is working now, it's going up to sixty-eight. Well, at sixty-seven now, I hear it might even go up to seventy. They have to come out more years. Probably. But, and, and trust me, when you're 65, it's not the time to be grinding. It's, it's sad. Like I, I know people like my mom, she needs to grind because she, the only, like she's built a huge kingdom in heaven, trust me, but her kingdom on earth is, is scarce, you know? And so she's like trying to make it and dude, we're trying to help her. We're like, dude, mom, retire. And she's like, no, I'm going to go do it, you know? And like, she will <laughs> like, we're, I'm like, mom, live in my house. Let me feed you. And she's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, coach, I'm going to do it. I'm like, okay, cool. I was like, well, when you need it, it's here. My sister, other sister, everyone, all of us, she's got six kids, and we're all like, mom, just chill. And she's like, no. <laughs> right. But that's good. Go on her. But it's sad because she wants it, but, like, her mind's not as sharp as when she was 20. Her body's not as sharp as when she was 20. Like, trust me, you either need to grind now or you're going to have to grind later. When does the average person return to heaven? In the United States, mathematically, 80, 83? I think it's like 72, well, uh, something like that. I think a, man, a man in the United States today lives to be 85. I mean, 80. A woman lives to be 83 to 85. That's the mortality rate right now in America. Cool. So on average, you guys are going to live to 83. God forbid you live to like 93 or something like that. Because you're in the 20 years of your life, you're going to have to cover the cost of living without working. Like... What are you going to do there? Are you going to go live with your kids and like not be able to travel, not be able to see them? Like my dad, he 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 doesn't travel anything. He's got no money. He's living with a, a woman, but he makes no money and he has no money and like he can't do anything. Like and how do you want your life to be? Like begin with the end in mind. What do you guys want in life? Like it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's either you're going to live from 63 to 83 and they're going to be the best years of your life or you have freedom to do what you want, enjoy life and be with your kids. Like, I don't know. I'm just, it's just some facts. So number wise, yeah. How much does the average person need per year? You just said, okay, how much do you need currently to live per year? About $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year. So you need $60,000 a year for 20 years. It's like a million dollars or whatever. That's at today's inflation rate. The cost of money doubles every 30 years. That means if you need a million dollars now, you need two point something million dollars when you're 63 and 30 years or whatever. Like you guys, you think being a millionaire is like, ooh, fancy? No, it's just living. It's just like, if you don't have a $2 million nest egg by the time you're 63, like you're- I just you're, listened to a guy yesterday that 200 millionaires are created a day. Yep. It's nothing these days, guys. Trust me. Like, I'm not bragging. Like, I've like, I could sell that company and like, trust me. I, like, I'm I'm a millionaire. I'm worth like five million dollars. Like, but I'm still grinding because I'm not there yet. It's not there. I'm not there yet. Like, <laughs> and you guys need to get there and just put in the time and be putting money away. Like, the goal is to be able to retire someday. You know, and so I'm just trying to help you guys. Like I'm reading all the books and I'm trying to become successful in life and it's starting to work for me. And I just want you guys to be there too, you know? Awesome. Um, so what's your why? It's a need. It's not a why. Like I don't buy things that I, I'm still right here. 
I'm still right here. Like I've got four kids, I got a wife, and I'm just making. They need a they need a house. They need safe cars. They need a good education. My kids have health needs. They need. They can't eat all this crap food. They need to eat. Like my. They need childcare. My wife needs to self-actualize and be able to enjoy her life and not go crazy sitting inside a house. So she needs to be able to work and express herself. My cost of living is twenty thousand dollars a month. That's what it costs, sorry, to have four or five kids at a house and be normal, be able to go on vacation for one time a year, it's $20,000 a month. Like, I'm not trying to scare you guys, but I am. I'm trying to just be like, cool, the average person in America how, makes how much? About 3,500 a month. Yeah, like they don't live there, you yeah. know? This opportunity can't allow you to get there. All I've done is just knock on doors. I don't know how to run a company. I don't know how to manage people well. I don't know how to like, I know how to knock doors. That's about it. And I know how to be nice to people and be people's friends. I know how to win friends and influence people. If you ever read the book, read the book. If you hear nothing else for the rest of your life, read how to win friends and influence people. It's the first book I read that changed my life. And then after you read that, come to me, I'll give you another 200 bucks to read. <laughs> cool. So what are your whys? Like, guys, I'm sorry. You don't have the luxury to like, I don't know, be tired or whatever. Like, that's why, that's why I went from 20 to 100 in a month. It's because my need changed. I was like, crap. I got a wife and I don't have the money to do it. Like, crap. And it's hard. And trust me, it gets only harder when you get older. Trust me, if you can't do it now, try to do it when you got a wife and kids. Or five. All the, all <laughs> the people, like, trust me, I used to grind. I worked from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week for the last seven years until my wife was finally like, cool, this has been fun, but it hasn't. Like, something needs to change here. Like, if you can't do it now, don't try to do it later. Like, just... Be like, cool, I'm gonna make 60,000 a year and I'm gonna live off social security, like, or do something, you know? Um, but it's, it's definitely not too late for anybody, not looking at anybody, but it's definitely not too late. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me. <laughs> well, no, I'm just kidding. Um, dude, trust me, it's definitely not too late. Um, like, because by working together, we can all get further. And so you can put in the eight hours and still make amazing money, but you need to put it into the right thing and be committed when you're there, you know? Um, like, you don't need a long time to make a lot of sales, right? Mm -hmm. Ezra, do you need a long time to make a lot of sales? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry guys, but like me and my, like, I walk around and I'm like, oh, cool, thank you, money, okay, thank you, money. The people come up to me like, do you want money? I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. Like, <laughs> literally, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's how I am. I'm like, crap, this is awesome. And then I take that money and I put it into a vehicle that gives me a 20% return on my money, not a 10%. And like, I do it for a while until it builds up. So guess what? I want to help you guys do that. Like, just oh. like, let me help you do it. And it doesn't have to be this. I, I know people who do real estate. There's a ton of money in real estate. I've got my wife's getting into that. I've got other people getting into it. Like, you can put it in other places, and you should. Um, cool. Anyways, I'll get off that. But I just like, I don't know. Obviously, you can Thanks, tell. Man. It's not like good stuff. That, that's just coming straight from my heart. That's like what I think about on a constant basis. Um, checkpoint restart. So we do this in seasons, right? We've been, we're two months into the season. Stop. You hit the halfway point. Look back at the last two months. What has happened? Tell me. Winston, how many did you sell in the last two months? Oh, 82. Nice. Nice. Dude, that's, that's solid. Behind time. It's good. Man. Sorry? I'm behind time. Behind time? Is, is that 82 doing this for you? No. <laughs> And everyone's needs are different. When I was in college, I needed, you know, 10 a week. Mm -hmm. You need 20 a week. Correct. <laughs> you need 20 a week, you know? 
You also need a couple guys under you also feeding you too, which this job is great because it affords that. You don't have to be a master salesperson to go out and make accounts and sales in this. Especially with this new build opportunity, it's crazy, it's stupid. And they're building 40,000 of those a year. Referrals too. Referrals? It's... Referrals are legendary. <laughs> Dude, um, okay, so check how many, everyone knows how many they sold in the last month? Or last week, I mean, I don't know if it, you have been in this about two months now? A <clears throat> month and a half. Month and a half? I got everybody's numbers pulled up right now. Are you asking me what I've been? Since I started, I'm at 68. 68. Nice. Um, it's just time to look back if you've been doing this a week. And so the thing is, though, um, now we're going on. So what did you do? And what... Think about, okay, what, how, how committed was I? How was my work ethic? Are there times when I could have done better? What did I do good? What are the wins, you know? And we always want to stay optimistic and, you know, look at the good in life. But what are the bads? What did you do wrong? What could you do better? And there's two ways to do better in this job. You guys know the two things that you need to do to do better in this job? Yeah. What are the two things? Wow. There's, there's only two things that you do to get better in this. It comes down to two things. Do what? More time on the doors, talk to more people, put more work in, and put more training in. You can train more, and you'll make more sales because you'll get a higher closing ratio. You can spend more time on the doors, and you'll make more sales because you're going to talk to more people. But you need to know your numbers. You need to know your metrics, and you need to track your numbers, and you need to improve your numbers because it's math. It's just math. It's a closing ratio. It's can you get past this objection or does this objection kill you every time? If an objection kills you one time and you keep getting that same objection and they're just like, oh, I just sprayed, so I'm good, thanks. And you're like, oh, okay, well, call me if you need it. You know, that kills you. How many times are you gonna let that kill you? Uh, Thomas, did you hear that at all yesterday? Or, hey, I just sprayed. Yeah, I've heard that. Did you hear it yesterday? Um... Not yesterday, no. They're... You heard that yesterday? Like three times, yeah. Did you sell them? No. Cool. Thomas, when I was out with you, we sold three counts, and how many of those people said, we just sprayed? Uh, two of them did, and, and the other one just couldn't, couldn't spray, otherwise she would have, probably would have. Yeah, she was 85. <laughs> but two of them, young guys, just moved to the house, like, oh, I just sprayed, like, I'm good now. I'm going to see if that goes ahead and work, and I'll call you if I need it. We closed them. Mm -hmm. Like, and it wasn't a dollar. We didn't, like... We weren't door to door hordes walking around giving everything away for free. We built the value. I think it was like 49, 30, not 33 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. 450 contract value. Not terrible. You know? I think maybe the first one was that was the first door we knocked. We're trying to get the ball rolling. Okay. We, we gave it away. You know? Dollar, 89 bucks a month, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we got it rolling, you know? Yeah. We made three sales, not two sales. And we made the first sale, which led to the second sale. We built the confidence for the third sale. Because we just went right next door and said, we're taking care of them tomorrow. Right there. Yeah. Because that's what makes it effective. Plan your work and then work your plan. There's a schedule on this planner. It's plan your work. What time do you guys start knocking doors? Mm. On Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, what time do you start knocking doors? One o'clock. So everything that you need to do to get prepared to be knocking that door, that's drive time, that's food, that's personal things, that's family response, like everything's done by one o'clock. So you're at that door. Is it okay to be early to work too? Like, yeah. um, if you get, why do you try to be early to work? If I need to be there at one, cool. I'm going to try to be there at 11, at 1230, which means you'll probably be there at one, right? That's how I am. Plan your work and then work your plan. If you fail to plan, you plan, plan to, fail. to fail. Thank you. So I love this. This is my one passion life. This is the one thing I'm good at. This is the one thing that makes me feel like I'm worth anything in life. I put a lot of time into it. It's like Ryan Kovacs. He's like, he's a great guy. He was washing dishes for three years, making 1250. He was like, Doing stuff in life, he was trying to be a pro skater. Like he found this and like he poured into it, and he's killing it. How many sales does he have so far today? Uh, he's got one so far. One. Um, so this is I'll tell you the place where you make sales though. Are sales made in the intro or when you're explaining the service? 
Is that when sales are made? Nope, that's just giving them information. That's just telling them about the service. But the actual sale starts when after that first close. You close and then you start selling rather than telling. So what you guys need to be good at, you guys know how to explain the service, right? You know what the service entails and you know how to talk about it. Cool. That's not why you're not making sales. It's not because you're like, oh, what do they do? They, they spray the eaves and they sweep the yard. You're not getting that wrong, trust me. Uh, but you guys ever knock on someone's door and they're like, oh yeah, hey dude, I'm super busy right now, but I appreciate you. Does that ever happen? And what do you say? Cool. Yeah, just, just real quick. Just real quick. Yep. Uh, what What are your what icebreakers do you guys use on a consistent basis? Uh, me, I've been saying it's hot. I ask people how you doing, and they're like, I'm fine. How are you? And I just pause. I'm like, I'm hot. Cool. <laughs> and I just and they're like, Yes, it is. And I'm like, Exactly. So I'm gonna be brief. I don't want you to be hot like I am. And nice. That's what I'm talking. Most people smile. And they're like, You want some water? We got ice cream yesterday. Like, I mean. Yeah. Just listen. So, um, it's, it's, really really it's really great to see you. Yeah. Yep. Actually, it's like we've been friends already for for years. Smile. 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 Eye contact. Yeah. Head nods. So, do you guys have a solid icebreaker that you use on all of them? Are you profiling the person before they open the door? Do you know what you're gonna say? My favorite one is always I knock on the door. I'm like, Hey, how are you doing? And they're like, Good. And I'm like, uh, I don't know if you're doing good. And they're like. And they think I'm going to be like, oh, you got bugs or something like that. I'm like, I think you're doing great. I think you're probably close to fantastic than anything. I'm like, dude, this is your house. You just bought it. Dude, that's amazing. Good job. Yeah. And I compliment them. Yeah. Oh, I'll say that too. Welcome to the neighborhood. Yeah, welcome to the neighborhood. So one thing I'll tell you about icebreakers, I'm not planning on training about icebreakers. Icebreakers should be nothing about you. Yeah. I'll just say that. It should yeah. be about them. There's a spotlight. Always. It's either on them or it's on you. Who do people care about? Them. them. They don't care about you for one second. They care about them. So make it about them. Compliment them. Pick them up. If it's hot outside, be like I do it sarcastic. They're like, "Hey, how are you doing?" I'm like, "Man, I'm just loving this weather. I, I, it is so good. Like, I love it. You know, just throwing out positive stuff. Like, that makes sense. man, I wish it. Like, man, do you have a sweater? I wish like it's a little chilly out here. <laughs> like, man, I forgot my coat. Like, I wish, wish someone would like turn down that AC. I'm like freezing out here. Like, get them to laugh, you know, rather than it's hot. That's like a, yeah, it's, it's yeah, hot. Like, it's hot. Like, okay, yeah, you're miserable. Like, you're like, oh, I'm, miserable. I'm happy. I'm loving life. Successful is happy. open the door and be like, oh, Yeah, so that's your cold. iceberg. like, oh, man, it is so, so cold. Can I step into your heater real quick? Hey, guys, if it's hot outside, it's 72 degrees, three feet from where you're standing. Yeah. Be like, like, is it okay if I just, like, we can leave the door open and cracked. Is it okay if I stand right there? Yeah. And that's how I do it. Can I stand right there? I do that all the time. Cool. Thank you so much. We can leave that open. Build some rapport. Talk about the neighbors. Get through your little intro and be like, I got two more seconds. Of, I only need two more seconds of your time. I need about this much of your time more. But can I t stand right there? Because I need to talk about your sink over there. It'll be easier if I show you that. And then I, my pitch kind of moves a little bit more towards the inside. I'm like, now what we've been getting a lot is a lot of bugs when we come inside. You know how they get inside, right? So this is your, can I go to your kitchen? Is this your sink? So you see this, this pipe, it goes into this wall back here. That's called your plumbing void. And then you know where that pipe goes? It goes down through your concrete. The hole is about this big and the pipe's about this big. It leaves space for the bugs to climb up into your house. That's why you're probably getting like silverfish or like crickets or like American roaches, spiders. It's back here. When my guy comes out here, he's sitting that. No one else does that. That's why we're the best and stuff. Who are you using? And you're inside. And then you're like, yeah, let me go over the numbers. And I would sit down at their, I would sit down at the kitchen table. Now I'm there. I'm planted. I'm not moving until they're buying. They can give me as many objections as they want, and I'm like, yeah, that makes so much sense. I'd do the same thing too. Just like sit at their table. Yeah. Like I'm not leaving until you buy this. <laughs> like That's a solar thing you made the mistake of yeah. letting me in your house. Sorry, dude. And like, and I'm just enjoying it. I'm like, I'm just I. I'm not gonna end this sale because I don't wanna walk back out there. I live here now. But dude, you're not sending me back out into that heat. I'm gonna stay here until you sign up. And so it's it's kind of nice because it builds up this like reason to keep pushing. Cause you're like, oh crap, I'm not leaving. Like 
I would rather make I would rather fight through you and make this sale than walk back out that that door. <laughs> like like yeah, let me show you. It's up it's up here. Like yeah, everyone's been getting these little cobwebs inside. Like I don't know. Get good at it. That's my advice. That's what I did. When I, it was my first summer selling in DFW and I didn't have a car and they would take me at nine in the morning and they would drop me off in these poor established neighborhoods. I knocked established neighborhoods my first summer and, and they're like, you better sell or you're gonna die. Like I sold 250 my first summer, sold 100 in a month, doing exactly what you're doing. And I got inside. We'd get back to the office and we'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm so hot. And they'd be like, I sold one today. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't, I literally didn't notice it was hot. I literally, like, I was actually remember being cold because I, like, had shorts on and short sleeve shirt just to be hot. And I'm sitting inside a 70 degree house all day. And I was like, oh. And then I would just sell them and sell them and sell them. And I'd sell five to 10 a day. Like, so that's what I would do. Um, but you got to get good at this. So I don't want to take all your guys' time. But um, I hope you're taking notes. I hope you guys are recording this. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you're getting the audio. I hope you re-listen to this. I'm giving you, that's the hardest part, is I'm like, dude, here's success in life. And like, I hand it to everybody I can. I'm like, hey, everybody, look at what I found. And they're always like, okay, cool, yeah, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know why more people don't do it. Um, <clears throat> buyer's resistance. So here's one thing I'm gonna give you guys. Guess what, it's all the answers to the test. All the answers to the test are right here. So, um, buyer's resistance. What's buyer's resistance? I'm not interested in buying anything right now. You guys ever get that? Yeah. The path of least resistance. I don't need anything at the moment. Sorry I'm busy. I don't have time for this. This is buyer's resistance. This is just, uh, you know. Um, you can get past the good icebreaker and a smile before it ever becomes a problem. But I'm not in the mood for any sales today. I'm not interested in what you're selling. I've already got everything I need. Here you go. If they say, I'm not interested in buying anything right now, you say, I completely understand I'm not uh, but I'm here to quickly show you something important that you should be aware of it'll only take a moment cool that's a quick little thing you can say and then keep going and then you're past it it's over it's gone it's smoke they don't even remember they said it at the end of the sale I don't need anything at the moment I, I hear you um, I'm not here to waste your time I just need to give you a quick overview of what's going on so you'll so you'll be in the know like none of this is about any it's just like these are just like I just need to tell you something real quick so, so you're aware of it. And then you keep going, you know? Um, sorry I'm busy, I don't have time for this. I appreciate that you're, I appreciate your busy schedule. Uh, however, I'd like to take a moment of your time to show you something that could be beneficial. Um, can I have your attention? So here they are, I'm not gonna read through them all. I'm gonna give them to you, whether you take the time on your schedule and you plan it into your life, make it a priority to actually memorize them, it's up to you. I'm not gonna manage you and make sure you did it. I'm gonna to try to motivate you and get you on fire to do it. Um, cool. So there's buyer's resistance. If you guys need some icebreakers, here's some good icebreakers. Good morning. I hope, you're, I hope I'm not interrupting anything, interrupting anything excited. Just wanna introduce myself and see how you're doing. Cool. Um, I couldn't help but notice what a beautiful neighbor this is. Uh, mind if I take a moment to appreciate it with you? Oh, that's nice. I don't know. Um, the master of ChatGBT is, right. is Mike. Mike knows all about ChatGBT. Guess who made this? AI wrote these for me. ChatGBT. It's free. You guys can get online and use it, and it'll write an amazing script for you. I said, give me 10 icebreakers. Cool, make them funny. Make them this. Make them more assertive. Make them that. And it wrote them for me. You can even have it on your phone, too, for how. You can even have it on your phone. I promise I'm not a wandering traveler. That's awesome. Or a lost traveler. You could tell it to, um, yeah, you could tell it to write you a hundred of them. Mm -hmm. um, smoke screens. So, you guys know what a smoke screen is. When does a smoke screen enter the, the conversation? I'm going to try and get rid of you. Okay, but in the path of the conversation, where do smoke screens enter? Between introduction and price. Yeah, introduction and price. They're gonna, you're going to get your introduction, and they're not going to be like, what's cheap? They're going to say, uh, I'm too busy right now. I already got a trusted pest control provider. I don't believe I have any pests. Um, I'm not interested in spending money on pest control. I prefer to handle pests myself. I've had a lot of uh, bad experiences with pest control companies in the past. Mm -hmm. They're gonna give you all kinds of like smoke screens again to try to fluff you away and give you some type of thing. If you believe them, the sale is dead. Like you, you can't stop until you've at least told them what you're selling. And the best way to get past it 
is just to like quickly move it past it. Um, buyers are liars. I'm, I'm sorry, say, buyers are liars. You know how I know? Because I've sold thousands of pest control accounts door to door. I've pitched tens of thousands of people door to door and they give me every objection in the book. And then suddenly at the end of it, they're signing the paperwork and all those objections disappear. Like the guy that we were with and he was like, we're not making any decisions today. I take the husband this way, he takes the wife that way. Not five minutes later, I see her sitting there signing the paperwork. And I'm like, I thought you weren't making any decisions today. I didn't bring it up. We just treated, I don't need anything for a while. My guy just sprayed, I don't need anything. Like, I don't have the money. Like, they say all kinds of stuff, but you just move past it. You just move past it. Don't don't think about it. Just do more, think less. Just move past it. And, and just remember a phrase that you say to it. Just like muscle memory. Just muscle memory. Um, I appreciate it. And whatever it is, these are examples. Customize them to yourself. Make them feel comfortable. And then say it a hundred times until it's really smooth. And while you're out there, go ahead and write down the objections um, that, that are killing you. Um, I don't think I have a pest problem. I'm not just in a regular pest control. I prefer to help myself. You guys can go ahead and read these. I'm going to share it with you guys. So the things that I want to get into are objections. So where does an objection enter the sale? Almost immediately. In, in the price. sales process, there's nine steps to the sales process. Where do objections enter the, enter the conversation? When you're trying to close. Thank you. Close. There's there's nine steps to the sales process and closing is one of them. And I see a lot of people forget to close. They say, cool, and then if you ever need anything, we'll come back for free. And then they give the customer the, the control and they say, where should, we where should we go now? We'll do it for free and say, where should we go now? And they're like, um, let's go straight to the trash. Hey, you, you, you drive. Where should we drive to? Let's drive straight into this wall. No, I'm driving this car. Yeah. You're the passenger, and I'm taking us to Disneyland. Like, cool. Uh, you are going to be here tomorrow, right? Yeah. Cool. I just need a good email to get everything started. That's stepping to the paperwork. That's turning on to, on to paperwork drive. But you have to have a close that takes them there. You can't be like, cool, and then if you need anything, I'll come back for free. Which way should we turn now? Well, let's, you know, don't give them control. You control the conversation. They say exact, every single sale I make, they say the exact same thing because I tell them what to say. I tell them to say, I say like, how are you doing? They're going to say, good. I'm going to say, you're not doing good. You're doing great. This is a beautiful house. I built a trust. I'm sure you know them, 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 and them. Cool. If I can help you, I'm doing it for, I'm doing it for so cheap. And they're like, they repeat that word back to me. What's cheap? I give them the word to give to me. They don't even know what there's. I don't say, choose your own adventure. This is not a choose your own adventure novel. This is a cool, super cheap. They say, what's cheap, which is what I want them to say. Or I know what they're going to say. They're going to give me 10 different smoke screens, which I'm going to say the same thing to every time. Sure, no worries. Let me just show you real quick what I'm doing for everybody else, just so you know. And then I take the next step. I say, Typically for a home your size, if you called my office, it'd be $329. After that, it's cheap. It's just $129. Because I'm already here though, taking a hundred dollars off, I'm doing it for just $229. And that's still for everything. What all your neighbors love about my service is what I do up here in the eaves. Like, I don't know if you guys have knocked with me and seen me close consistent sales. I pretty much say the exact same thing every time. And it just works. Um, it's working for me. Like you guys can go say whatever you want because you guys, but I'd recommend you say what I say because it works for me. And you just learn the jokes and you learn when to smile and you learn when to give eye contact. So, but the biggest thing I see why people fail is because they get stuck on these five objections. You finish and they say, I'm not interested. And how do you feel when they say that? When, when you're like, elk, and it, you're gonna be here tomorrow, right? And they're like, oh, I'm not interested. How does that make you feel emotionally inside? I feel like you got rejected, basically. Okay. Ezra, how does it make you feel inside? Yeah, rejected. Okay. Anybody else? No. Feelings? I make me feel at all. When you just gave it your all, so I explain the service and they say, oh, yeah, but I'm not interested. 
Okay, that's great. Um, it, it shouldn't, this is a game that you're playing. And guess what, guys? Every single time, they're always gonna say not interested. And you know that they're gonna say not interested, and they just step right into your path. You knew exactly what they were gonna do. You shouldn't feel bad about it. You should know that they're gonna say it. They're gonna say no five times. You know it, I'm gonna tell you this. Every single sale you make is gonna say no five times. You know they're gonna say no five times, and you know you're still gonna make the sale. You're gonna be like, you're gonna say, if I can help it, I'm doing it for super, or you can say, you're gonna be here tomorrow, right? They'll be like, um, yeah, no, I'm not interested though. And you're like, yeah, sure, no worries. Maybe just give your bug bag call or run to Home Depot or just get the stuff out of your garage that you've been using. <laughs> it's just, I am taking care of all my neighbors, all my customers, and everybody else is gonna be calling their bug guy. So it is just a lot more effective when we all treat together rather than ping pong the bugs back and forth, if that makes sense. But one thing that I, I do out here for my service that everybody loves that will be important for you as well is what I'm gonna do for you out here in the yard. What I do every time I come out here for you is I'm gonna go ahead and use a water activated granule. Different than other companies, I'm gonna treat your entire property. I'm gonna granulate like, everything from the front curb all the way to your back fence. That's gonna, and so tell you what, if you'll go ahead and just make sure that the lock is off the gate when my guy gets here tomorrow, I'll go ahead and make sure that my guy treats the entire property for you, just so that your neighbor's bugs don't migrate over here into your property, if that works for you. Cool, what's a good number to let you know we're coming by? Like, Perfect. it's, I don't need it. My, I don't need it. Cool, you actually do need it. And this is what I'm, the added value I'm gonna to give to prevent that problem and, and make it make sense. And then I have to close. And I don't say, do you want it, yes or no? I say a soft close. I test their buying temperature. I put out my pawn and I say, like, you good? And they're like, and they're, they're like, yeah, okay, I'm good. Or they're like, they're like, if you're gonna take the lock off the gate, I'll make sure my guy treats the, the front and the back here for you, okay? And they're, if they're like, mm, no, I'm like, that's okay. I knew you were gonna say no. And I knew the next thing you are gonna say is you're gonna ask for a card, because now you know there's a need, and then if there is a problem, you're gonna, you're gonna call, ask them to call. But what you're saying is, you're saying that, um, that what you're saying is that, okay, I wanna buy outside of your time frame. You're saying, oh, I'll do it later. And I'm gonna say, no, this is not a, th my time frame that I established at the beginning was tomorrow with everybody while my truck's here. You're saying you're gonna call me and get the same price. Like you wanna frame the situation by which you're negotiating at the beginning of the conversation. L set, set it all up so that they can't get outside of your box and you're gonna corner them in and close them. And so they're gonna say, oh, can I get a card and I'll call you saying I'm gonna do it later, right? And you're like, oh, sure, I never object to anybody. I'm never, I never object to anybody. Um, I just show them reasons why and I just pull them my way until they want it and they close themselves. I say, yeah, I could give you a business card, but like I said, I'm the area manager, so it's not really like a call and coupon. The only reason I'm here is because my service expert is gonna be out here tomorrow and he has two spots left. And those are the ones I'm able to discount you. And it's just kind of like a first come first serve thing, if that makes sense. But tell you one thing that most people have loved about my service out here, that's been really important, is what we do in the garage. The garage, we've been getting a lot of spiders. Uh, you'll get the big wolf spiders, you'll get the, the black widows. What I'm gonna do for you when I come out here tomorrow, again, I'm doing assumptive language. What I'm gonna do for you when I come out here tomorrow is we're gonna go ahead and put out spider traps. Because the thing with spiders is they're so big they can run from your neighbor's house into your kitchen in 30 seconds. And my products work fast, but they don't work that fast. So what I'm gonna do is right at those entry points where they're gonna squeeze in, I'm gonna put a trap physically and catch them. They're nice because they also work for like the big roaches, they'll catch like mice and like even small snakes and stuff like that. I'll also go ahead and treat inside the garage as well though too. Just so when you open up that garage door at night, you're not getting a big wolf spider running inside your house ruining your evening. Um, if you'll go ahead and just make sure that that garage door is open when my guy gets here, I'll go ahead and make sure he puts out those fire traps for you, if that makes sense. And they're like, okay. Like they're, they're like, they're seeing the benefits. And they're like, they're like, huh. They're like, and they don't say yes. They're never like, yes. They're just kind of like, they're kind of like, hmm. And then, and then you say, cool. Uh, what's your first and last name? So, and then you just move them. They haven't said no. They just haven't said yes. Like they're never gonna say yes, but it's just, if they don't say no, they're just gonna be like, hmm, okay. 
which, and you're not saying which way should we turn. You're saying, let's go, we're going, we're going straight. And they're like, stop, no, don't go straight. Yeah. Turn on to the, I need to think about it because I don't know who you are and I don't know who your company is and I'm not, and I don't understand enough about this situation to go that way. That's the next thing that's happening inside their head. I'm just like letting you guys know. And this is, it's just normal. That's a green light sales I was talking to you. It's just, it's just normal. Like you, it, you, you guys are, you guys are a little off if you think that people are just going to sign up when they just met you three seconds later and they don't really understand everything. Like you, it's just part of the sale. So I'm sorry if I didn't communicate that. Explaining the service is part of the sale, but resolve is closed is also part of the sale. Which, if you guys have watched the video that I showed you guys, do I not go over the five objections in the video? Yeah. I go over them all. I, I roll them, I close them, I add aces. I've gotten better at it. What I'm telling you now is actually better than what I did there, and it doesn't turn your price into nothing. Because I have not dropped the price at all. They said, your service is not worth that price. And I said, this service? They said, your service is not worth that price. I'm not willing to pay that. I said, this service? I'm, in, I'm increasing the value of the service rather than saying, oh, you're right. My service is crap. Yeah, it's actually not worth what I said. I don't believe in my services. Yeah. You do it for a dollar? Like, they're like, oh, a dollar. Who cares? Yeah, let's just do it. Um, I want you guys to get paid for working, you know? Uh, I'd rather you guys close them for twice as much and make twice as much money. So they're going to say, I want to think about it, which what is the subconscious thing that they're really asking for at that point? Uh, yeah, they're asking, they're saying, they're asking for, I want to check your reviews. I want to do some research. I want to think about it. And you're like, yeah, of course you just met me. You have no idea who I am. And I don't know if you've ever heard about our company. I'm sure you're going to want to do some research. Let me help you out. YouTube, Google reviews, and th don't get me wrong, there's a lot of companies in DFW and they're all good companies. You know, I don't care who you use, it's just important that you use somebody soon. You know, you can call this one, they got a 4.7, they got this, they got this. Here we are, you know, and we're not the biggest company in the world. A lot of people like us because we're local and the owners are actually here and we actually care about you and take care of you. And so, you know, you can call, I know we got a 4.9 or 5 point with hundreds of reviews. Um, you know, we're, you know, they're all good, but we're a good option. And then a couple things that are really good about us though, that really sets us apart from all these other companies is try doing the attic. The attic is a problem because you'll get American brooches, you'll get silverfish, you'll get wasps, you'll get spiders. Do you know the worst thing you're gonna get in your attic? Out here in these new build homes, the houses were built with plastic pipes. And you know what bites those plastic pipes? little one ounce little mices. They will cost you tens of thousands of dollars of damage. And if you don't believe me, I'll give you the number to Cora Snyder and you can call her and ask her. I can send you the video of her testimonial of it. She had been in the house a month. She put on all of her life savings to buy this house. She walked into her guest bedroom three weeks later and her wall was soggy because mice had been chewing on the water pipes in the attic and destroyed it. It cost her 10, it, I don't know if you know this, does insurance pay for a house when termites damage it? No. No, because you can prevent that. Insurance will pay if a raccoon busts into your house in the middle of the night and causes a bunch of damage. They'll pay for that. They'll also pay if lightning strikes your house because you can't prevent those. If mice get into your house and chew on the water pipes and cause flooding and you call the insurance company and say, will you pay for that? They'll be like, no, why did, why'd you let them do that? You let them do that by not having a plan in place to prevent it. A plan in place to prevent it. All I'm suggesting is you find a plan to prevent it and all I'm saying is that since 100% of our customers deal with this problem and we're a local company, we understand the problem and we have a solution. So if you can be here for me tomorrow, I'll make sure that my guy gets up in the attic, treats all the bugs and make sure that you don't have rodents nesting in the attic. We'll also continue to monitor that for free as often as needed while you're a customer. Um, is the attic entrance in the upstairs or it is in the garage? It's in the garage. Cool. If you'll pull the car out for me, I'll make sure my guy gets up there and takes care of that for you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Like, cool. What was the house number here? I'm slowly gathering the pieces of the information and I'm slowly adding value. And guess what guys? Everything that I've described is already included in our basic pest control package. So, but if you sit there for half an hour and explain our service, they're going to be like, Ugh. and you're going to say, do you want it? And you're going to be like, no. And you're like, oh crap. I've explained everything already. If you walk out there and say, it's a dollar, it's 59 bucks, and they say no, you're like, ah, oh, crap. And then you're trying to like justify this 
it's just backwards. I'm just telling you to do it like this. And it's hard to emotionally do it like this, but if you guys just practice saying the words outside of the situation, then when you get into the situation, it makes it a lot easier. There's not as much emotion in it because you're just saying something. You're just singing the national anthem, whatever. Cool, so reviews and attic for rodents and inspection and sticky chest monitoring, right? Hope you guys are writing this all down. All the resolve A's closed, what ACEs go with what things, which clothes do you use, which soft clothes, which hard clothes, what's the transition. Don't worry, I'm gonna put it into a little PowerPoint and I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna hand it to you too. I'm working on it too. <laughs> Whether you watch it and you memorize it or not, it's up to you. Um, then what are they gonna do? They're gonna say, well, actually, I don't even have the power, the ability to go ahead and do this myself. I, I, it's not even my choice. You can't even, like, they're going to try to push off the responsibility onto somebody else and uh, try to create some objection, some barrier to entry. And it's just another one. It's just, it's just, it, they can buy it. They just are trying to give you another obstacle, right? Um, and we have a way to overcome that. But what is the unspoken objection there, actually? Does the wife care? If, if your wife came home and you had cleaned the house, is she gonna get mad at you? No, she's not gonna mad at you. If you paid cleaners to clean the house and spent $100 on it, is she gonna get mad at you? She might get mad. She's like, oh, I thought you cleaned the house and it didn't cost me anything, but you spent $100 and you didn't tell me you were gonna spend $100 out of our budget? Now we got something to talk about because you just spent our money without talking to me about it, right? He does, they don't care that you're treating the bugs. Yeah. They care that you're spending the money. This isn't a, does my wife want to get rid of bugs? Does my husband want to take something off of his to-do list? You know, if, if, if your husband comes home and you mowed the lawn, is he going to be mad that you took something off his to-do list? No. Until you tell him that you spent $100 to do it and you hired the neighbor kid to do it. He's going to be like, oh, crap. Like, we should have talked about spending that money. Yeah. Might also get upset that you got into one year contract to sign up and have that you're done on a quarterly basis. You know, you signed up for a cleaning service. Um, so this is a, a money type thing. And so they're typically asking for a price drop. That's what they're typically asking for. They're like, duh. So, or an ace, or an extra ace. So you can either go outdoor rodent control, actually give something for free, or you can go price drop, which you ask that. You say, cool, I don't know if you believe me, which when you say that, everyone else says, yes, I believe you. I don't know if you believe me. I've never met a wife that didn't love having a professional pest control service. They're going to say, yeah. I don't know if you believe me. I've never met a husband that loved having something taken off his to-do list on the weekend. Yeah, I believe that. Cool. Um, now, I don't want anyone getting in trouble over pest control or signing up with anything. Um, and I, I was actually going to suggest we talk to your husband too. Can we give him a call? Can we call them? And sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Let's call them. And then the sale's done. You think it's some big, huge objection? All they said is I need to talk to my spouse. Cool, did you wanna call them my phone or your phone? Cool, let's call them. And they're like, oh yeah. And then they're like, they're like, oh no, they're busy. And you're like, okay, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but so what you're telling me is that you think it's a good idea and you wanna go ahead and do it. You just wanna make sure he's okay with it or make them feel like they're part of the decision-making process before doing it. They're like, yeah, I'm totally down for it. And you're like, okay, cool, you're sold. We just need to make sure it's cool with them. Cool. Well, no worries. Um, you know, right now I have the most ability, authorization, and permission to offer you the very, well, is your husband more like the, the kind of guy that like, he's gonna, um, when he goes to, to like a fast food place, he's gonna order off like the dollar menu and he's just looking for like the cheapest thing to get it done? Or is he gonna order like the, the Big Mac with the hot wings and all that other kind of stuff on there? Like. Is he more about getting all the best things or is he more worried about like just the money? So the, he's more worried about like money. Oh, my husband's a miser. My husband hates spending money. It's a money thing. Oh, it's a money thing. Because all, there's an unspoken objection in there where like, no, it's not, it's not the money. Like, dude, we got plenty of money. It's just like, I just need to run it by him and yeah. stuff like that. Okay, cool. Well, no worries. I have the most power to do the most for you now than I do later after these spots get filled up and stuff. So I can really work with you now. And so I'll tell you what, definitely we're gonna to wanna to run it by him. And if he says no, like by all means and stuff, I don't want anyone like getting divorced over signing up for pest control. But if you were willing to work with me, 
I'd be willing to work with you. And if you're willing to make an work with me and make an executive decision right now so we can get you on the schedule and get you this pricing and everything, I'd be willing to work with you and throw in a lot of extra services if we can get this done now. And they're like a lot, a, a free extra bonus service now where I'd be willing to work with you and really work on this price for you now. Are you willing to work with me if I'm willing to work with you? They're like, they just agreed, I have the power to make an executive decision. If this is good enough, I can make an executive decision. Or they're gonna say, nope, it doesn't matter if you handed me a check for a million dollars, there's no way I'm ever gonna be able to say yes right now, I do not have the power to say yes. If they say yes, you just, you don't need to talk to your spouse. Yeah. You just told me you can make a decision if it's sweet enough, you know? Cool. Like I said, one of the worst issues that we get around here is up in the attic. Rodents are the worst thing you'll ever deal with because they're what I call a double dinger. One, they can do tens of thousands of dollars of structural damage to your home. Uncovered by insurance, that's coming straight out of your pocket. It's, in my opinion, worse than termites because it can happen in a night. It can do tons of damage. Moisture damage, way worse than some beams getting eaten, trust me. Um, two, it's a double dinger because it's the only thing on this list that can do structural damage. It can do property damage and personal damage. The most valuable thing, your most valuable asset is not your house, it is you. If you get sick and stop being able to pay that mortgage, the bank's not gonna be like, oh no worries, you're good. Like, they, I don't wanna get into all that, I don't like talking about all that, but like, they put urine on the ladders that you're touching, you're moving Christmas boxes, the poop like gets in the air. It would be better for you to eat a piece of poop and put it in your stomach than breathe in a piece of poop and put it in your lungs. Yeah. Like. I was like, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get gross. Like, I don't want to tell you any of the stories that I've seen doing this for how long I've been doing it. But trust me, you don't want rodents in your attic. So what I'm going to do for you is it's typically another $250 initially. And then it's going to add about another $200 a year. It's about 20 bucks a month to add this. Our, it's our outdoor rodent control. So what we're going to do is we're going to put out stations on your property that are going to monitor and prevent rodents from nesting on your property. Every time our guy comes by, he's going to check that and the bait blocks are a very distinctive shape. And it's very easy to see what's chewed on it. And it's like, oh, that's a rat, that's a mouse, that's a field mouse. You can tell what's chewed on it by the teeth marks on it. And then you know that if it's been chewed on, that rat's not waking up in the middle of the night and running a marathon. He doesn't live six miles away. His nest is not six miles away. His nest is max 300 feet from that bait box, which the easiest thing to keep running inside your house is to keep them off your property. So we're gonna go and all of our guys are trained to look for the nesting site. And our guys have done it. They're like, oh, you have rats nesting right here. Cool, let's go ahead and get those off to keep them out of the attic. If they inspect the property and they can't find, and now this is just your plan to prevent rodents. This is what I told you you need. And this is what we provide that most companies don't. And they're like, oh crap, so you're the only option for me. Yep, and I'm the cheapest for you right now too. If we do not find the nest on the property, it triggers us to say, uh-oh, it's probably in the property. That triggers to go up and inspect. And a lot of times you can't find the activity from sitting on the landing area and going like this. And the insulation is so wonky anyways, unless you have a trained eye to tell that that's a trail and that's a burrow, you're not gonna see it anyways. And rodents don't enter and pop up at the landing area. They always start at the edge of the home, go under the insulation, work their way to the landing area as a last resort, because it smells like humans. By the time you notice them on your landing area, dude, sorry, you're infested. Yeah. Problem's there. and it's not cheap to get them out and seal up the holes where they got in and then continue to keep them out because now there's pheromones. So it's not a process you want to get to. It's about $5,000 to get rats out of your house and seal it up. I, I don't want you to say exclusion starts at about 2,500 bucks. Yeah. It goes from there. God forbid they've soiled your insulation to the point where there's an yes. odor and a health risk and you need to remove all of your insulation and replace it with new insulation, which is about $10,000. And clean the entire area. I'm like, I'd rather give you this bait box for free and put a trained person on your property to monitor and prevent this problem than to you call me in three years like people do every day of my life, call in and say, I hear something in my attic. And then we go and go, yep, you got your, your attic is officially like a litter box for rats, like a cat box, litter box, full of poop and pee. You ever smell one of those? It's disgusting. Your attic is now a litter box for rats, except rats carry a lot more diseases than cats do. And uh, you can live with that in your property, it's fine. You can keep it there, whatever you want, it's your house. But getting it out is about $10,000 just because of the material alone. Insulation's expensive. 
the safety alarm, crawling through your attic. Like I walk into so many houses and there's a hole in the ceiling when they come for a free inspection. It's like, yeah, my husband tried to do it, but he fell through the ceiling. Like I've had other people in other companies who don't train their guys to do this, walk in, go straight through, break their pelvis bone. You definitely don't want untrained people doing this. Most of the big companies don't do it because it's such a high liability and so hard. Most of the small companies don't do it because it's so hard. They don't have the manpower to really handle it. We have an entire dedicated team just to rodents only because of the sheer demand for it. It is a very big problem. We can handle that problem. And if you'll go ahead and do it with me right now, I'll go ahead and include that entire service for free. I just need a signature right there. I always end with like free. And they're like, crap. Even another good ace that I've found lately that's been great is offering free inspections. People like the fact that you're just gonna include a, when our technicians are out here, they're also inspecting, they're looking for termite damage, they're looking for rodent damage. And so that's a huge value to them too, just somebody that actually lets them know. They, you know, we'll let you know if there's something, a problem on the house, tree leaning on the house, a bush that might be causing you to get ants in the first place. And so we recommend things to you every single time that we're here as well. Perfect. I don't want to take all your guys' time because your time is very valuable. So I'll be quick with this. The other one's money, right? They're like, oh, he's a miser. It's a money thing. Cool. Some price drops. Cool. If I was able to take $100 off that initial service to save you a total of $200, can we go ahead and get this scheduled for tomorrow? Okay. And then you just, and then there's other excuses or reasons why you do price drops. If after all of that, they're like, I'll pass, then it, then you can kind of start working on the price and stuff and be like, okay, no worries. I just, at this point, I just need to make sure I get these spots filled up and I kind of just need to, I got to get going. I got, I got a place I need to be tonight. Um, you know, and what we do when we come out here too anyways is, is we'll get a couple customers. We'll, what I'm going to do for you actually, is I'm going to treat your house like a marketing home. So I'm not going to charge you normal price. I'm just gonna do a fantastic job and show you how great our service is so you can brag to all the neighbors about it. And then they'll call me and pay full price. But as long as we can get you scheduled on this route, our costs are already covered. So I'm just gonna kind of fit you in at, 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 at like our break even costs. I'm not really trying to make money off of your home. I'm just gonna to try to make a happy customer. So if you can help me, I gotta get out of here and I just gotta make sure these spots are filled up so I'm making sure I'm doing my job. If you can be here tomorrow rather than paying Google and trip fees and everything like that, I'll go ahead and take $50 off that initial, I'll do it for just 79 bucks. Does that sound fair? Um, cool, did you wanna use a Visa or MasterCard? Every single one of my closes has been to the paperwork. Green light, okay, go. So, who can come sit here and repeat verbatim exactly what I said? If you were able to do that, you would be closing at least five a day. And I just said it, it's there. Can you guys speak the English language, right? So you know all the words and you've learned all the words. So you have the ability to learn and you already know the words. Like you guys can do it, it's just time. How can I help you do it? Tell me what I can do. You want me to, I can hold you accountable. If you give me the permission, I will hold you accountable. Checkpoint by checkpoint, piece by piece, until you have it done. And I'll text you every single day. That's what I do. Hey, did you have that memorized yet? Hey, did you have that memorized yet? Hey, did you have that memorized yet? At the same time, my time is very valuable and I got a lot of people to help. Um, so I was talking to somebody once and uh, I was trying to teach him it and I was trying to teach him it and I was like, what can I do better? How can I turn this into this? How can I help you? And he was like, you know what? He was like, I don't think you can. I don't think you need to be a better teacher. He said, I think I need to be a better student. It's ultimately, it's, it's up to you guys. Like, trust me, I'm, I did, I've done nothing for Ryan Kovacs. I've done nothing. He has done it all himself. He just wants it more than anything and he's getting it. So I'm gonna do as much as I can. I'm gonna keep trying to be better than I have been and we're working on making the program better and better and better and it will continue to improve. Um, but I can't do everything. Something I am doing though, 
something I am doing is that I'm investing into software that will make your guys' job easier. So we're getting Sales Rabbit, which will show you nine, one out of 10, which house is most likely to buy pest control from you. I'm paying a lot of money to tell you who is moving into what houses every single month around the entire Metroplex so you can cherry pick them all, not just the new builds. I'm, it's doing a ton of stuff. It's gonna help me track and make sure you're working so I can help you be accountable to that. On top of that, next Friday, we are going to meeting with Ciro um, Software, and we will be onboarding with this. It is a AI sales coach. It is going to listen to you when you pitch on the doors all the time, and it is going to know when you, where you messed up and what objections are killing you. Then it's gonna say, hey, this objection is killing you the last five times. You need to overcome this objection. And then it's gonna say, here's five recordings of five people on your team and how they got past this objection. You should listen to these, you should read these, and you should memorize these. Tell me when you have it memorized and we are moving past it. Awesome. So it's not cheap, but it's worth it. And so at the same time, as I invest more into making sure that reps are successful, I need to be getting, make sure that they're successful. If I have reps who I'm investing $1,000 a month into making sure that you're successful, if like if I'm not seeing it on your part, I, there's only so much I can do. Right. I can only invest all my time that I have, and I can only invest all the money I have, but that's all I got. I can't do any more for you than give you all my time and all my money. Like at some point, I need your time too. And like your money. Yeah. Like, and guess what? I'm not charging you guys either to learn this stuff. Like if I go and become a consultant with DDD experts and they're like, hey, can you become a consultant? We'll send you any companies. You can teach them how to recruit, how to train and train their sales reps. And typically it's about $10,000 for, for like three days, two, three days. You'll make about $5,000 like to go on the doors with these people and train them. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm just doing my own. Like I'm busy enough and stuff like that. Like you guys aren't paying me to train you guys to help you build this stuff. And I'll tell you, I spend $2,000 a month to be trained, to continue my education. I'm spending $2,000 a month to continue to become better for you guys, to become a better teacher, a better recruiter, better, build a better program, learn how to make it better. Like, are you guys investing in yourself as much as like, like you gotta invest in yourself. You gotta give all your time and you gotta give all your money to invest in yourself so that you can accomplish your needs and your wants and your goals and your whys. Because the same way that this is the end of two months, does time move quick? Time moves slow. The older you get, the quicker it goes too. Yeah. Like, I'm 34 now, like time goes, time goes quick. Um, and it, in 10 years, you'll look back on 10 years and see what you have. Yeah. So, and it'll go quick. Um, Cool. It really does. That's, that's longer than I should have spent with you guys. But, I don't know. So next Friday, we'll get together. I've got a lot more we need to talk about. About the division and the destination of the company as a whole. MD2DM, Dan Can, our growth, our projections. I need leaders. I need high quality salespeople. Um, next Friday is the 7th of July. Yeah. <laughs> Independence, not day. Um, so we're doing a MD2DM barbecue and everything like that. Um, so be there, be square, starting at 11. We've got an expert griller. Sure. Sorry, you guys can battle it out. Maybe you can both grill and see who's better or something. That'd be fun. Taste test. Will has <laughs> said he's good. I've heard you're good too. Um, cool. Before. You can do whatever you want. Okay. I've sold more accounts on the 4th of July than any other day of the year. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. That's how I work. You, everyone. If you want to show up at this time, show up at that time. Because I've trained hundreds of people, and a lot of them have not been super successful. And you can be one of those if you want. I've trained a lot of people, and I tell everybody the exact same thing, and I've had a lot of people make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this job. 
set themselves up for long-term success. Philip Stanfield, Scott Roberts, like Robert McMahon. I, there's a lot of people that I've trained that are still in the industry killing it. And with me, it was just a stepping stone to bigger success. Robert McMahon, my friend from elementary school, he's got like half a brain. No, he's super smart. Um, he, he makes $300,000 a year closing solar, just sitting there and just closing it. Like um, Jake Bennington, like his success is in mind, but he's, it's crazy. Cool, so obviously this isn't a pizza party and I didn't have food. We're not here to, we weren't here to do that. But I do want to reward effort for showing up. So I'm gonna take attendance and then I'm going to, whatever you, if it's Zelle, Venmo or, or uh, Cash App, I'm gonna send you 25 bucks to help cover gas and food. So if we're not gonna eat here, go get something you actually want and go get out there. Um, so who's here? We got Will. What? What is it? Venmo, something or another? All of them. Whatever. You I'll want. just send it through all of them. Twenty-five pieces of them. Um, Brian. Hey, who else is on here? Big deal off your ass. Mike Jones. <laughs> who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Scoolier. Scoolier. You can you can start saying out your names. My handwriting gets better and better over time. It's like your learning cursive as you go. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, I'm actually left handed. My, 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 uh, I don't know if I am, but my, <laughs> my left hand writes a lot clearer than my right hand. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. That's it. Name is Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Um, on a serious note, though, the summer I had my best summer, my teams killed it the most. On this thing, it talks about affirmations. I know we don't get spiritual and stuff like that, but every single day of that summer meeting, in, in the meetings, we would seriously kneel and we would pray before every day, and we manifested the most amazing summer we've ever had. That would be cool. Like, so... Do you pray for us? Yeah. I can totally pray for you. And you guys are going to have, your lives are going to change. Yeah. Good, like right now. I'm going to pray right now. Yeah, let's pray. Our kind Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have to come together and to help and guide our lives to this point. Please bless us that we can find the motivation, desire to accomplish our goals and become tools in thy hands to accomplish what that would have us do and to fill our destiny and to help our lives self-actualize and to bless those around us please help us to be guided and to those who need to be guided to us and to show the people that we work with that we love them and care about them and we want to benefit their lives and they'll feel that and they'll be attracted to us and we will build a organization that will help bless those lives about and help people be guided to thee as well in the name of Christ amen amen all right Okay, well then we throw in our hands and we go stand on the table. Stand on the table. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do that. Let's, I like that sound. We'll, we'll go slow and then we're gonna go like, I don't know. What's a good chant? Like, da, da, da. Oh. But we need to like. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We're gonna win. Why are we gonna win? Because we want to. Why are we gonna win? Because we want to. What are we gonna do? We're gonna win. What are we gonna do? We're gonna kill. What are we gonna do? We're gonna kill. What are we gonna do? God of War, one of my favorite songs. Song? Oh, I am the God of War. Did you get any romance cards, or did you not have one yet? I did not invest in that. Um, this is one of my favorite songs. Pump up songs. Major schedule. You call the shots. You.